Okay, so let's consider this curve here. Now, just ignore these little lines for a moment. And look at this curve. This is the curve, let's say, of some function f of x. This parabolic looking curve. And I just picked a value of, I just picked x. And, and this just represents any uh, value in the domain of f of x down here. Consider a point right here. We've got x comma f of x. That would be the ordered pair. So if I put in this value, x could be 2 or whatever. And then to get the y value, you would say f of 2 or whatever. But this is a point here on the curve, x, f of x. Now let's suppose that we go over some distance. We'll call it h1. And I calculate the function value up there for that. Well, it would be f of x plus h1. And, of course, the x value is x plus h1. So I get a point here and a point here. Now, at this time, we could get the slope of, of this line, right, which would be the average rate of change. And that would just be f of x plus h1 minus f of x, right? See, I'm getting the change in the y's over the change in the x's all over x plus h1 minus x. See, change in the y's over the change in the x's. This minus this, whoops, you can't see that. This minus this over this minus this, okay? Now, if you look at that, what that would be is f of x plus h1 minus f of x. And the bottom just simplifies to just be h1. Yeah, like that. See? Because the x's cancel out, and we just got h1. But this is the average rate of change. So what we, what we have here is we have the average rate of change from x to x plus h1, and that is represented by the slope of this line. Now let's suppose that we move these points a little closer together. In other words, instead of going from x to x plus h1, let's go from x to x plus h2, where let's suppose h2 is a little smaller. Okay? Well, notice the difference in the slopes here. Okay? It's a little less steep, right, for this one. Okay? Now, let's, let's let h be a little smaller. And then, so now we have this point. See? The, notice the x's are a little closer together this time. From where we started, and then we moved them a little closer together, and then a little closer together. So horizontally, the distance is changing here. Okay? We start off with this h, and now it looks like, you know, we're at this h. Okay? This distance. So the, the thing is, H is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. H1 is the largest, then H2, then H3. They're getting smaller and smaller. Then we've got H4. Look at this. H4 right here. And notice the steepness here. So you can see that the steepness of these lines changes as H gets smaller and smaller. As H gets closer and closer to zero, really, now look at this line right here, this one. Look at that. This line, if you think about, think about if you're standing on this curve right here, okay? So you're just standing there on this curve, and you're thinking about taking one step to climb up this curve, and you're wondering how steep it would be. Well, you're not going to look at this line, the steepness of that line. That's too steep. This one is a little better, but it's still too sleep, steep. This one's a little better, but it's still, still too sleep, steep. <laughs> this one, still too steep. However, this one, look at this one. This one right here, it looks like it's about the same steepness as the curve. Now, we'll analyze this more closely in just a second. But here's the thing about this particular line here. These lines up here are all called secants. Okay? These are secants. They pass through the graph twice up here. This one here, 
This one is called the tangent. And this tangent to this curve shares exactly one point with the curve. It touches the curve at exactly one point. And in this particular case, this tangent touches the curve exactly right here at x. So this tangent, if you write the equation for this tangent line, it would share this point with the curve, x comma f of x. Now what we're doing here is we're, we're, we're doing this. We're taking the average rate of change. See, that's the average rate of change. And we're letting age get smaller and smaller and smaller. In other words, we're letting, you know, these points get closer and closer together. See, like we did up here. Well, in other words, what we're doing, and so this gives us, this right here will give us the slope of secants. It will give us the slope of these bad boys here, these lines. But we want the slope of this tangent because when we get the slope of this tangent, we're finding the steepness of this curve right here. Now think about that. Think about if this is a curve that represents distance. Let's suppose that this is time, and this up here is distance. And this curve models our distance at any given time. And these represent average velocities. Well, what would this... The, these slopes, these slopes represent average velocity. Well, what would the slope of this tangent represent? Not average velocity. It would represent instantaneous velocity at this particular point. Instantaneous velocity. The slope of this tangent would represent instantaneous velocity. So what we want to do is we want to take the limit of this. We want to take the limit as h goes to zero. Because look, we get closer and closer to the slope of the tangent as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's what we want to do. We want to take the limit of this thing, the limit of this difference quotient, difference quotient, the limit of the difference quotient. And that's what we're going to call the derivative. And, and this is read f prime of x. Now we're going to explore that a great deal. But this is what we're going to call the derivative. It is the slope of the tangent, the limit, the limit of the difference quotient, the limit as h goes to zero of this thing. Okay, now let's explore this idea a little more. What I've done here is I've graphed uh, f of x equals x squared. And I've programmed, I've, I've written a little uh, function here for uh, the secant line. So let me, uh, let me turn that on, and you can see the secant line. So this secant line starts at 1. It's got the point 1, 1, and it goes over here to 2, comma, 4. See that? There's 2, uh, comma, 4. Now also notice... I have f of 1 plus h. Now, what I did earlier is instead of 1, I had x, right? So I had f of x plus h. But let, let's see what happens. Now, notice, I've got a secant line here, a secant. And this is, this is the equation for that secant line. This right here, this, the f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h, that's the slope of that secant. Now, h, I'm going to increment. I start off at h equals 1, and I'm going to increment that. Now, notice what happens as I start to change h. See how the slope, that, that line moves? Look at that. Yeah, cool. See how the slope moves? Now, think. Now here's my goal. I want to find the steepness of the curve right here at 1. I want to know what is the slope of the tangent at x equals 1. In other words, I want to know the instantaneous change here at x equals 1. Now, if we're talking about distance and velocity, I'm trying to find, and I'm looking at a distance curve here, I'm trying to find the instantaneous velocity. How fast am I going right here when t equals 1? So let's just move this slider. Notice I'm decreasing h, 
And notice how this line is moving. I'm getting closer and closer to what the tangent line should be. Okay, now look at that. Notice the steepness of this curve and the steepness of the graph look pretty much the same. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. Let me just keep zooming in here. Look at me zooming there. Okay. Now, as I zoom in, you notice I don't see much difference in, in the two curves, in the, the uh, red x squared and the blue line. See, they look the same, right? Do you see how they look the same? Okay, now I'm going to, now, so, and remember, we're looking right here. We want to know the steepness of the curve right here. Now, I'm going to turn off the blue line. I want to I point out something. Look at, remember, let me turn it back on. If, if I were to ask you, and let me turn off the function. Here, here's that blue line. This is the tangent line. If I were to ask you, what is the slope of that tangent line? Well, you know how to do that. It's rise over run. So you, you're here at 1, you go over 1 and up 2. 2 over 1. The slope is 2. So you might say, okay, the velocity is 2 miles an hour. Okay, let me turn that off. Now I'm turning the function back on. Now here's the function. This is x squared. Look what we've done. If we zoom in enough... You can, you can actually, you've got this thing that's locally linear, right? It looks like a line because we've zoomed in so much. And look at this. You've got one, go over one and up two. Two over one, rise over run. This slope is two. Two miles an hour. Now, here's the thing. We zoomed in on this curve, x squared, and we could get the slope of the tangent. In other words, I could find the steepness of that curve by zooming in using Desmos. But we can't always do that. We, we need to have a more rigorous way to calculate the instantaneous change. Well, the way we calculate the instantaneous change is we set up that difference quotient and take the limit as h goes to zero because... When we let h go to zero, we end up with something like this, okay? Where we can, we've got a line, and notice how this line matches up. Well, we can get the slope of that line. That's the derivative, and that's what we want to focus on. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's suppose we've got f of x equals x squared. And I want to go through the process of trying to find the uh, instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1. Okay? Now, that's what we did um, just just now. That's what we did. We found the instantaneous rain, uh, rate of change at x equals 1. Now, another way to look at that is we want to find the slope of the tangent. At x equals 1. Okay. Another way to say that is we want to find the derivative at x equals 1. Okay. So, so here's what we have. We have this function here. And uh, I, want to, I want to find these things. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look upon this as finding... I'm going to, first of all, think of it, okay, I want to find the average rate of change on this interval. Okay, I want to find the average rate of change. Okay, so, so let's just look at what that might look like here. Okay, so we've got, you know, x, we've got, whoops, there we go, so you can see it, x plus h. And up here we've got x plus h, comma, f of x plus h. 
and down here we've got x, f of x. So what I want to do, I want to find the slope of that line that cuts up through the, whoops, actually, the way I drew that, let me, let me draw it a little better, okay. I want to find this, this slope right there. So this is x, f, f of x, and this is uh, x plus h, f of x plus h. Okay, there we go. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's that point. Okay, <laughs> okay, there we go. So I want to find the slope of that line right there. Well, here I go. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to say, okay, f of x plus h minus f of x, okay, there we go, all over h. Okay, f of x plus h minus f of x, okay, all over x plus h minus x, and we're just left with h on the bottom. So, so let me go ahead and, and, and calculate this. So here I go. I go x plus h squared minus x squared. F of x plus h, well, that's just x plus h squared because that's our function, right? And then f of x is just x squared, and I put that, all that over h. Now, let me go ahead and do the algebra. So now I multiply this out, and I get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. See? And then, uh, let's see, oh, look at this, this cancels. So I'm left with 2xh plus h squared over h. And something that jumps out right away is I can factor an h out of the top. And that cancels with that on the bottom. Yeah. So it looks like my average rate of change is 2x plus h. Now, this isn't the instantaneous rate of change. This is the average rate of change. I want the instantaneous. So remember what we do. We turn down the H. We let H go to zero. Let H go to zero. So what we have then is we, we talk about the limit. The limit as H goes to zero of 2X plus H. And, of course, to evaluate this, there's you just plug in. This is a simple limit for us. And you just get 2X. Now, what this is right here, this is a machine that will spit out slopes. You give me a value for x, and I can tell you what the slope of the tangent is there. So look, we have, we have a couple of machines here. We have the original function machine. That's what a, a function is, right? And it takes things that you put in there, and it squares it. So if you put in a 3, it spits out a 9. If you put in a 1, it spits out a 1, okay? But what we have now, and, and so this right here, this machine is f of x. This, is mach this, this machine is f, f of x. Now, what we've just done is we've found the derivative. And the derivative is also a machine. But the machine that the derivative, what the, what the derivative de machine gives us is slopes of tangents. And in this case, we found that the formula for the slopes of tangents is going to be 2x. So if you put in a 3 in here, it spits out a 6. And this is f prime of x. f prime of x. That's what this machine does. So I have a machine here. Now, if I want the slope of the tangent at x equals 1, it would be this. It would be f prime of 1. f prime of 1. Well, that's 2 
times 1 b2. Yeah, that's the slope right there. That's the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 for that function f of x equals x squared. Okay, so we've got, you know, we've got this f of x equals x squared. Let me just draw it real quickly. Okay, and we've got, let's say this is x equals 1. We've got a tangent there. You see, this is x squared, and we've got this tangent. Now, uh, uh, of course, this point right here at x equals 1 is the point 1, 1. And we've just found that our slope is 2. So if we, we could even go further and say, well, I want to get the equation for that tangent. Well, remember the point slope form, or yeah, the point slope form of a line. Okay, looks like that. You give me a point, x naught, y naught, and a slope, and I can give you the equation for the line. Well, look, I've got that here, right? I've got y minus 1 equals the slope 2x minus 1. And there is the equation for the tangent. If you want to expand it out, you get y equals 2x minus 1. But that's not the derivative. The derivative is the slope of the tangent. That's what the derivative is.